Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Prickly Hedgehog. Thanks for tuning in again for another weekly update on things going on in DCS world this week. And here we are, happy Friday, May 1st, for most of us here, uh, depending on which part of the world you're in and when you're viewing this video. But the year is chugging on, and in quite a lot of it spent indoors uh, through March and April. For those of us in lockdown and now we're seeing a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel that maybe some restrictions can be lifted if you're under the covid cloud uh, again stay safe out there make sensible decisions use common sense and hopefully we can get through this yet and return to some degree of normality speaking of normality uh just a short update this week from eagle dynamics our favorite flight simulator team they are working hard on the b47 thunderbolt which they have been working on for a wee while the p47 uh, i don't know anything about this wonderful world war ii aircraft but just as a reminder there is still a great sale going on with the other warbirds and that is a free-for-all event which we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks and you can of course fly most of the aircraft in the game for free and you will get a 50 percent discount on most of the aircraft uh in the the game right now and that is a cool thing so um take advantage of that if you can i haven't yet i'm still kicking around whether or not i will pick up something uh time constraints mean um it limits my ability to do all of the things i want to do in dcs but i know um it's also a jolly good time to pick up some some good aircraft for a very very cheap so and that supports eagle dynamics and we should be doing that because we want them to be funded and continuing and supporting our favorite hobby all right all right let's tune back to the thunderbolt so some development shots here i don't know anything about this aircraft i must be fair uh, obviously uh looking at the controls here looking at the the pictures it just kind of fascinates me how much of a development there was excuse me while i slurp coffee here it's not very professional but it is what i'm doing right now i went to work earlier for one thing and then i ended up being there for most of the day and that was not what i intended but sometimes that's how things unfold Anyway, I don't know very much about the Thunderbolt. In fact, I know almost nothing of it, but it's just amazing to me to see how much more sophisticated this cockpit is compared to some of the other warbirds in the game uh, and other birds that I'm familiar with. The level of you know, development in these aircraft during that period is quite fascinating. And even when you think about aircraft in general between the two world wars, you know, these early planes were nothing more than stick sticks strings and wire and and um and wood and paper uh initially and you know we started off with just hey this is going to be an observation platform so we can kind of see the front lines and hope we don't get shot out of the sky by an errant um flak gun or something like that or a, a um you know artillery shell but you know then we started well now i can drop some bombs on people down below and then well, now, to stop that, we're going to start shooting at each other from across each other's cockpits, so to speak. And then, now I'm going to mount the guns on the plane. And now we're going to build the planes out of stronger materials. And the engines are going to get better. And we're going to put uh, glass cockpits. And, you know, suddenly we've got something that resembles more like a modern fighter that we recognize. And within, you know, a few years, we've got jet engines. And now we're flying, you know, to the stratosphere. So, incredible development especially over that World War II period, but certainly between the First and Second World Wars, how much of a massive increase there was in the in the performance of aircraft in general. It really is kind of a fascinating period of our, of our history. All right, so, um, yeah, a lot of, lot of work being done on this P-47, and, of course, what I'm excited about is that once this is done, then, of course, we get the team from that moving over to do more work on the hind, which I'm also very much looking forward to as well. Now they are talking here about the channel, DCS World mod, uh, Module, excuse me, and they're taking here the opportunity to share the growing realism of ground operations. We encourage you to explore newly released World War II battle ready, ready assets. Gosh, I'm struggling today. I've been concentrating very hard today, so I'm a little bit tired. Um, and I didn't have lunch till like an hour ago, and it's already four o'clock so you can imagine how i feel uh <laughs> we have a long way to go and your feedback as a community helps contribute to the future of dcs world ground 
control ground ops with combined arms combined arms is on sale right now too by the way and that's uh, 20 bucks if you're interested in that so lots of different things going on but no major updates on any of our big aircraft and nothing new in terms of a timeline as far as i'm aware with regards to the supercarrier which i think we're all eagerly waiting for for those of us with um, naval birds in our st um, stables so stay tuned for that i'll bring you information about that as uh, it comes to hand um yeah i did a little bit of flying this week not as much as i would have liked there's a little bit of uh, time spent with the f-14 of course and I wanted to do what I really have been trying to do is practice uh, as much or as many brake landings as I can for the aircraft carrier so that when the supercarrier does finally come out I'm not a complete boo at doing that. It does take a little bit of practice uh, and maybe I'll bring some videos when I'm a little bit more competent and some things that I've noticed with that with regards to the field of view and disorientation as you do some of these maneuvers with Eagle Dynamics's product because you just as a human being, as a fighter pilot, you, you have more peripheral vision and stuff, outside of G-Lock, of course, um, and you have a different orientation space and feel for what you're doing with the aircraft, which you don't get in a 2D environment. I don't know how the VR pilots feel about about this, and this, like I said, this will be a, maybe a topic later on. Um, and I'm just kind of curious between the 2D and the 3D VR environment whether there's a benefit there. Um, how those pilots feel about that level of realism. Uh, what I feel is that uh, your brain is interpreting a, what should be a 3D environment but looking at a 2D screen. Um, and I think that makes it challenging sometimes when you are dogfighting or if you are trying to do um, high, I don't know, complex maneuvers or high angled maneuvers and you lose a little bit of orientation sometimes uh, maybe that's just me but that's kind of how i feel about it which makes it sometimes some of these maneuvers a little bit challenging anyway share your thoughts uh below and uh let me know how what you're flying right now and how things are going for you and um yeah i will try and bring you more videos of things that i'm doing um sadly we are a little bit short on news this week i did see a little snippet from something about heat blue going solo and apparently that was on Hoggett. Somebody was suggesting that they were going to do their own simulator. Uh, this was poo-pooed very quickly, and that is not the case. One of the developers, I believe, uh, needed to take a little break from um, programming and stuff because of a family emergency, but that, that person is now back on deck, and business as usual for Heaplow. They are working on the F-14A. I'm not aware of any other projects. Um, they are also looking at a, a smaller aircraft carrier, which I think I mentioned it as well. So lots of little things that they are doing, but I believe that Forrestal class aircraft carrier is going to come out after the super carrier. Um, yeah, there was a lot of speculation from the members about the relationship Heat Blur has with Eagle Dynamics, and these were sort of bedded as well that, you know, there are some conflicts sometimes in terms of, you know, working through things um, to make sure that the simulated product fits in the simulated uh, game environment but uh, you know some of the more radical speculative conflicts that might that we think might exist didn't so that was good to know anyway so just a little snippet of information other than that um, as I said earlier this week the F-14B is one of my favorite aircraft so I know that Heat Blue is not doing a sale right now as um, compared to just about everybody else and all the other modules in the game that are owned by Eagle Dynamics, unfortunately. But, you know, as I identified, they are a smaller studio. They have bills and uh, overheads to meet and pay. Um, so, you know, we just have to accept that, that that particular aircraft is not going to be on sale at this time. But doesn't mean to say it won't be in the future. And uh, who knows... Uh, what's coming up. I'll keep you informed as soon as I know anything. So shout out to Eagle Dynamics of course for providing this wonderful wonderful opportunity to fly so many different aircraft right now and of course offering us a great discount. So that'll do for this week. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you're doing well like I said before. Huge shout out to all the likes and subscribes this week. A lot of people subscribing and I, I there's too many people probably to list off here. One of these days I will take the time to do uh, some of the people that are subscribing and just a shout out to them but uh 
Um, for now, thank you all. You all know who you are, and I really appreciate it. And I appreciate particularly all the feedback as well. So carry on doing that. Keeps the channel chugging along. All right. Carry on flying, guys. Take care. This is Prickly Hedgehog out for another week. We'll see you around. Mm -hmm.